give a brief summary of how you cleaned it up and how much was leaked. Okay. And then show us those graphs. All right. So I was pretty lazy. <laughs> and I went into the South African data set and I took um, Avis and I just sorted them. And then what I did was I removed, so I, I laid it up with 477,592 records. And then with that, I removed all the non coordinates. So if a record had no coordinates, I removed that. And that took me down to 4, 475,881. And then what I did was I cheated <laughs> and I asked. Madagascar, which uh, bird sort of classification system I could use to determine um, if I had all of the correct species. And I went into AV base, which was your recommendation. And based on that, I started off with 239 species. And once I'd compared the two, um, it was down to 217 species. And then what I did was I put it into a query and then we did a query around the frequency. So it was the count frequency by year, which is what's on the screen at the moment. That's the raw data. And then I had lots of help. And that's <laughs> what the data shows. So there's the, if we start off in 1893, which is this side to 2011. And I was told that, <laughs> <laughs> this part is normal. <laughs> this part is normal, because it's as collectors are collecting, am I getting that right? all the occasional collections. Yeah, and then it steadily climbed from 1949 up, and then there's a bit of a dip. Yeah, as you can see, and then it's a dip off. And I, one of the suggestions that were made was that this section is around data was provided, and then not again, and then provided again. Or it might have been, we had typed upload, and then we didn't type <laughs> upload again. And then this last bit is, data hasn't been uploaded yet. I've noticed that's on the vertical uh, axis that did the log scale. So that dip in the 1980s is uh, orders of magnitude. It's not trivial. Okay. So something's, something's missing there, some chunk of the big data set. And then the other one we worked out was the month using the same query. How do you... <coughs> Get it to come in. Whoa. How did you get the other one to come back to the front? Maybe just pull it up. Yeah. Yeah. Pull the other one down. There we go. So this was around the number of record does the number of species that were observed in the months. <coughs> so sort of January would be the peak of when most people are back from Christmas holidays and they are happy. That's it for now. Now I'm going to put it into GIS and make it pretty cool. Who else has something to show us? people a bit about the data set, what's in there. Yes. I worked in, in the blends of Egypt. I extracted the available ones. I put it in uh, longitude and latitude is, uh, is Excel sheet. I moved it to the GIS and uh, according to the point density, you can find that my delta 
Is a most common sedata. Was on it. That's all. Okay. This upgrading, what is it? What? The details now. It's for the lens. I can imagine. Red, you know. Mm. So red is for where? Is there red is uh, high and uh, oh. uh, so can you use is no. Can we use a, a function? I actually hadn't used it in ARC before, but it's, it's point density. And I don't know much about it, but I think what it's doing is it's essentially counting numbers of points occurring within a certain radius. It didn't, it didn't uh, depend on the value of the weight. Just it's a combination. Just the count. Yes. And so this is something you can see in Egypt very, very frequently where it's, it's all about the Nile, okay? And that's where almost all of the, the biodiversity knowledge is concentrated. So uh, I'm using the um, DBIF data for grasses in South Africa. So it's, you know, basically I'm, I'm interested in alien grasses in South Africa, so I subsetted it to alien grasses, although I need to work on that list, so it's not completely right. But anyway, um, and then using those coordinates from Deba for the alien grasses, I got precipitation and temperature, and this is just a plot of that. So this is for basically all the um, uh, available grid cells in South Africa. So this isn't the alien grasses, it's basically for every coordinate in South Africa. And that's sort of, that's a um, density plot for that. And then this is for the alien grasses and then that's just overlaying the aliens on the available. Um, so the color doesn't actually come out in last on this. But what you know what you should see is there's a, a darker patch over here. So this is a, a heat plot that's basically showing where there's more points on a, on a point. Um, so you can see there's been lots of sampling, for example, over there. So that's quite high precipitation, intermediate temperatures. But actually most of the environment is here. So it's quite low precipitation, high temperatures, and there's been almost no alien species sampling in that yeah, environmental space. That's it. <laughs> okay, so the next step in visualizing this, that gap. To your right, three steps. Oh, sorry, thanks. <laughs> the next step in visualizing this, this is really neat. You just identified a set of temperature and precipitation combinations that are apparently under sample. Now the question is, where are those? Yeah. Is that some particular region of South Africa? Or is that speckles here and there across the whole country? If it's a cohesive region somewhere, that would be very interesting. Mm -hmm. That is the data with all the species that are occurring in Kenya. We do the clipped map for Kenya, and it just shows all the densities for various points of location. This pink is Phylloscopus, that is a species I was interested in. This one gives me a general feel because the points that occur towards the northwest of Kenya, the northern from the, the entire northern side, those points are erroneous because. Either there is missing data from such locations, or there is data that is unaccounted for. That is unaccounted for in these areas because they, they, if you look at the temperature, the climatic conditions for the northern part, they're not really friendly. So I, I did a um, maxent analysis for the same with, with a couple of species just to, to see how it would predict. And it confirmed that the samples that are occurring on the lower side, like Phylloscopus and then Trenops persica, this 
Uh, well, then let me show you where they had a sample. This is just like, through the model. The, the warmer areas usually show a higher predictability. So such a point for me would be questionable and I'd want to investigate more for the, on this on this data set. Eastern Kenya and not really data from Northeastern 